Hi YouTube, this is Black Moon Dragon here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Captain Marvel movie. Now, Disney and Marvel have been pretty successful with their releases of their previous films in the MCU, but does Captain Marvel hold up to the rest of the franchise? That is what we are going to find out today. Oh yeah, there will be some spoilers, so you might want to turn off the video if you haven't seen the movie yet. The overall plot is simple enough. The film is about Carol Danvers, an amnesiac who currently fights among the ranks of an alien warrior race known as the Kree, who are currently in a war with another alien race known as the Skrulls. One thing leads to another, and the fight ends up being taken to Earth, and Carol must learn the secrets of her past and question her allegiance to the Kree Empire. The plot in and of itself had an interesting enough premise, but there were some things that soured my taste for the movie. First off was the humor. Now humor has always been a part of the MCU and has always been used to lighten up the mood so that their movies don't get too dark and joyless. However, I personally felt that Captain Marvel went too far with their humor this time. There were some scenes that I personally felt should have been more serious, but were cheapened by humor. For instance, Nick Fury. Nick Fury has always been a mysterious character since we know so little about him. One of the mysteries surrounding him is how he lost his eye. The movie decides to explain that away by having his eye get scratched out by a cat. For those of you who haven't seen the movie yet, no, I am not joking. This really happens in the movie. While I'm still on the topic of the plot, there was something else that kind of bothered me. Now, most stories start out at a low point and have a rising action that leads to a climax before the characters find a solution which leads to the resolution of the plot. However, the one element in that diagram that's missing is the climax. The climactic final battle didn't feel very climactic to me. After Carol Danvers disables the chip that was inhibiting her powers, the fight becomes very one-sided and it is obvious to the viewer that she's going to win without breaking a sweat. Now, I know that she is supposed to be an overpowered character, but writers are usually able to find a way to still have stakes involved in stories where the character is overpowered. In some movies like, say, Man of Steel, the Incredible Hulk, or let's say Thor Ragnarok, there is usually a villain who is just as, if not more, overpowered than them. For instance, Superman has to face General Zod. In The Incredible Hulk, the Hulk has to fight the Abomination. In Thor Ragnarok, Thor has to fight Hela. Another strategy that some writers use to get around overpowered characters is giving them a weakness. For instance, Superman's weakness to Kryptonite. Now, I know that Captain Marvel had that inhibitor chip, but it only came up at maybe two points in the film, and she was able to disable it through sheer willpower which made me call into question the effectiveness of the device. Another thing that bothered me about the film was certain liberties that were taken with it. Now, I know that movies do have to take some liberties in order to fit the lore into a movie, but there's only so much I can handle. One such example involved the scrolls turning out to be the good guys. While there were a couple of good scrolls here and there in Marvel Comics, it doesn't completely line up with the Marvel lore, and it did bother me to some extent in the movie. Another thing that bothered me about the film were the characters. Marvel usually does a good job with their characters, 
but it didn't seem to translate into this film. Their previous films had some really memorable secondary characters. One example would be Korg from Thor Ragnarok. However, the characters in this film were not very memorable. For instance, Maria is supposed to be Carol's best friend, but their chemistry on screen was not able to convince me of that. When Carol shows up literally at her doorstep after having been missing for several years, I did not get the feeling that someone just reunited with their best friend after having thought they were dead. In fact, I found her character so unmemorable that I didn't even remember her name after watching the film. I had to Google it while I was writing the script for this review. And then there is Captain Marvel herself. In the film, she doesn't really make me think of the ideal of a superhero. At some points in the film, she gets a little too caught up with how powerful she is. One such scene is when Ronan, the accuser, shows up with a fleet and, and she effortlessly takes down one of his ships while appearing to laugh and have a good time. Now let this sink in for just a second. This person who is supposed to be the hero of the film just killed a bunch of people and is essentially laughing and showing off while doing so. Now, I personally don't have a problem with superheroes resorting to killing, but there's a right way and a wrong way to go about this. In the case of characters who kill regularly in the name of justice, those characters tend to be anti-heroes. Now, sometimes the more pure-hearted characters resort to killing the villain, but the action usually has some type of meaning attached to it. Usually it happens in circumstances where the hero really didn't want to do it, but had to. Even though they were trying to protect people and did what they had to do, they are usually weighed down by guilt after the act. When Superman is forced to kill someone, he usually experiences some kind of remorse for his action, even if he was only doing what he had to at the time. In some instances, the hero wasn't even directly responsible for the villain's death, but they are still upset about it. When Spider-Man jumps out of the way of the Green Goblin's glider, and the Goblin ends up impaling himself as a result, Spider-Man still experiences some level of guilt, even though the Green Goblin technically died to his own hands. However, Captain Marvel doesn't seem to show the same type of remorse in this situation. At several times, it comes off like she is just showing off, and it doesn't really come off as heroic to me. Now, I had watched the early premiere of the Shazam movie, and Shazam felt more like a hero to me than Captain Marvel did. While he does start off as a bit arrogant and a show-off earlier in the film, at least he eventually starts to fill the role of what a superhero is supposed to be. One such example of this involves a scene in the movie where he encounters a father and a daughter who are hiding and terrified at the battle that's going on. He hands the little girl a stuffed tiger and comforts her and shows great empathy towards her feelings. And at this point in the film, he starts to act like a hero. Now, I should probably get back to talking about Captain Marvel before I forget which film I am review reviewing. But my final thoughts on Captain Marvel are that it's the very first film in the MCU to actually disappoint me. 
I felt that it didn't really offer much to the main storyline of the MCU, and most of the interconnectivity in it pertained to past films, one such example being how S.H.I.E.L.D. came into the possession of the Tesseract. The film kind of feels like a filler arc that you might see in an anime. If you wanted to skip this film and go straight to watching Avengers Endgame, you probably could without having missed much in the way of important information. Now, I'm sure that I have probably offended some Marvel fans with this review, but bear in mind that I actually do like Marvel and that this is the only film they've put out so far to have disappointed me. Heck, I was one of the fans defending Age of Ultron while others were hating on it. However, the question remains, should I watch this film? Well, if you are a comic book fan who cares about the details that I discussed in this review, then there is a possibility that you may not care for this film. However, if you're not as nitpicky as I am, then as a casual moviegoer, you might actually be able to enjoy this film. My final score for this, for this film is going to be 2.5 out of 5 stars, and that's going to do it for my review. I hope you all enjoyed. Next week, I'm going to put out a review for the Shazam film. I might also sprink in, sprinkle in a video or two here and there, so keep your eyes out for that. But anyway, if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video, follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, y'all have a wonderful day, and bye for now.